Ragu, it's great to see you again. Um, to clarify, when did the deal close and how much runway did it give you guys? Good to be back, Deirdre. Um, the wires at the bank as recently as about three weeks, so this is a very, very recent round. And uh, speaking about the runway, we've been profitable, including despite the recent market conditions, Q1 has been profitable. So from a runway standpoint, we're very, very strong. The money was wired, but when did that close, Ragu? Sorry, just to clarify. Yeah, the, the closing process was about uh, a month back. Okay. Um, so things have changed, certainly, over the last month. Do you think that you would have raised at the same valuation, given everything that's happened over the last month? Do you think that that has been material for the crypto markets? Yeah, I think this round is definitely bigger than Falcon X itself, right? I mean, given that the funds uh, came as recently as about two weeks, some of the biggest names and the most reputed names in growth investing um, closed a very high quality round. And the reason why that happened is twofold, Deirdre. The first thing is from a vision perspective, uh, the data on this is very clear. Crypto for the very first time objectively proved that you can run full stack financial services, whether it's trading, credit, banking, clearing, 24 seven, truly globally and truly elastically. And no country, no company, no protocol has done this before. As a result, what we believe is a lot of world's value is going to be tokenized, including the traditional equities. And we are seeing signs of that already. So despite the market conditions, okay. our Q1 has been the highest in terms of uh, the number of customers onboarded, highest active engagement. And for those reasons, I think the round came about. Right. And you guys also focus on institutional investors. Ragu, Falcon X generates revenue via trading spread. So you guys are essentially a market maker in crypto. Can you explain how that works and how your institutional customers can be confident that they are getting the best price when you guys are doing that? Absolutely. So Falcon X more broadly is a digital asset brokerage. And you're absolutely right, Deirdre. We focus completely on institutions. Trading is one of our product lines. We also offer credit and clearing. So on the trading side, uh, the, the spread is effectively our, our revenue. And the way we aggregate pricing is we sit on top of um, a variety of liquidity pools, yeah, retail exchanges, market makers, OTC desks, and in some cases, miners. So we aggregate pricing from all these different venues, clean up with a layer of machine learning, and give a, a very strong, reliable price on top. As a result, reliability and the depth of liquidity is much, much greater uh, than other places. And that's how we aggregate pricing on top. Your, your point about uh, financial clearing uh, is a good one, and I've always wondered why the industry doesn't use that more as the tip of the spear, at least for the underlying technology. And I wonder if, if you think little bits of information we've gotten lately, reports of, say, Goldman, for example, wanting to require some Celsius assets is a sign that, that fintech and, and legacy financials are, are trying to brace themselves or prepare for that moment when it does become closer to reality. I definitely think so. Right. I mean, if you look at some of the recent stress tests in the market over the last two months, uh, there have been some systematic failures in crypto. And what we learned through the process is aspects of crypto are coming very strong. For example, when entire Celsius is panning out, uh, this is a systemic event in crypto. And what we learned from it through on-chain analytics is incredible. For example, if you were sitting in 2008 recession, and to understand truly what happened during that recession, it took three to five years to piece all of those flows and piece all of that information uh, together. But using a combination of on-chain analytics and also like in you know, a crowdsourcing on Twitter, the world actually learned much faster about how some of these cascades are happening. Now, this is what the traditional finance is also interested to your point. I think some of the innovation that's coming in crypto is not just going to be limited to crypto. It's going to transcend beyond crypto all the way to tokenized uh, equities in the future. And that is why a lot of legacy players are very interested.